started and I was hiding myself. I saw and saw my goodness like flying dragons, the roofs of the plains. I just rushed into a cave, I stayed there five or ten minutes, a lot of sound, and then quiet, silent totally. And then a lot of shouting, cry, kind of, kind of thing that I couldn't believe it. I saw that my donkey, my donkey, my do donkey was w wounded. And that I never forget. My donkey was dying. The eye was full of blood. And I sat there as he was talking to me. Why you fight? What is wrong with you? Who you are? Have you ever seen a donkey burning the house of another donkey? No. The war has started. Oh gosh, what a war. Winter day in December 1979, the Soviet army entered Afghanistan. The country was on the brink of civil war. Thousands of people were taking to the streets to protest the Afghan communist regime that had seized power with a violent coup a year and a half earlier. After months of riots and repression, the Soviet Union sent troops to support their Afghan allies and bring the situation under control. Afghanistan had to remain a socialist state. We, the army, all wanted us to go to Afghanistan. We thought that we had to give help to the Afghan people. We took it like this, that we will go and give help to the poor people, to live normally. I remember, I was born on the 21st of January of the 1980s, the aerodrome Bagram. It showed me that I was in the story of the 1001 night. The stars, the stars, Весь джинсы, апельсины, те вещи, которые в советском суде мы не видели. Я думал, что они отнесутся с радостью к воду там к нам советским, а все оказалось наоборот. Я же видел по глазам, как они на нас смотрят. Soviet came to support this regime, this brutal regime. So how can you support an invasion which support a brutal regime? I've been a student in the medical faculty and I was part of the resistance. We were distributing uh, night letters. We were, were writing on the wall during the night dead to Russia and get out of her country and so on, to encourage people to resist against the invasion, and against the regime. The fight against the godless Soviets united both peasants in the countryside and members of the elite. Right from the beginning in my life, living amongst my people, I knew that we were strong Muslims, and still we are, but not Islamist, but not fanatic. 
But whenever there was an invasion, people were mobilized around word of jihad, means fight for freedom. I thought the Russians, they don't have any belief. They're godless. I should not be with communists, and I should be with my people. And I joined the war. The Islamists had led the protests against the communist government. After the Soviet invasion, they turned the resistance into a jihad. They called themselves the Mujahideen, holy warriors. Mujahideen and ready to die rather than submit to the domination of the Russians. The Afghans feel very strong, but uh, even if we don't have more chance, but still, we will fight till the last drop. Now many of the men here are, are, are smiling and cheering and singing songs. How many of them are going to uh, survive? Well, we can't we can say, maybe none of them will survive, but uh, that's what we have decided, that we will, we will kill ourselves or we will make it. The bravery of the Mujahideen inspired people across the country. The myth of the freedom fighters was born. I remember when I became a teenager, one of my dream was that we will go and we will distribute water to the freedom fighters. At the time, I had no knowledge about why they're fighting, how was the fight. Only that was my dream, that I could go and I could help them. Can these largely illiterate and totally undisciplined tribesmen actually defeat the military might of the Russian forces? The Mujahideen were poorly equipped and lacked modern weapons. They were playing David to the Soviet army's Goliath. When war comes to a place, it often happens that one man's misery becomes another man's profit. Well, here in Dara on the northwest frontier, they deal very profitably in death, for this is the street of a thousand gunsmiths. With very little persuasion, you can get a rundown of the stock in Mr. Haji's shop. Yeah. How much is that? I think it's Shetland. 1,600 rupees. 1,600 rupees. Yes. Shooting position. We are not being helped with arms. We are buying our guns and ammunition from Dura with our own money, and no one has helped us with this. The Otherwise, we could finish the war in 20 days. When you stand and have a dream, you win because you have a hope. When you have a hope, you live. If you don't have a hope, you die every minute. I said, let us go to the world. Because they have everything. In our hand, what we have? Stone. Can you fight with a stone? Yes. Can you win it? Yes. How long it will take? I don't know. This is why I need help. Help was quickly found. In the logic of the Cold War, where the enemy of my enemy is my friend, the Afghan conflict was a welcome opportunity for the United States. Our first reaction to the Soviet invasion, it was a great shock because some in the CIA thought, this is really not a good idea from even the Soviet point of view, but they still went in. This invasion is an extremely serious threat to peace. A Soviet-occupied Afghanistan is a stepping stone to possible control over much of the world's oil supplies. The U.S. reaction to the Soviet invasion was swift. 
articulated by then National Security Advisor Brzezinski. I wrote to the president on the day after the invasion a memorandum in which I outlined what we ought to do, and the key sentence in it was, we now have a historic chance to give the Soviet Union its Vietnam. Brzezinski was a brilliant guy. He was sent out to Pakistan to reach a bargain, which would allow us to operate on their soil, to provide assistance to uh, the Afghan resistance, the Mujahideen. In Pakistan, Brzezinski made a historic speech to the Mujahideen. Well, that land over there is yours. You'll go back to it one day because your fight will prevail and you'll have your homes and your mosques back again because your cause is right. God is on your side. Here's the National Security Advisor. It showed that America was back in business and from there on, we moved into action. We, the CIA, and never let up. So we started with maybe, what, 10, 15, 20 million dollars to buy a few guns. And it kept getting more and more, another 20 million, another 100 million. And, but it was still peanuts. That, that's not a lot of money. But we were beginning to make a difference. Have you bought many guns yes, for Afghanistan? Yes, many guns. How many? About uh, uh, 30,000. 30,000? Yes. Where does, that's a lot of rupees. Where, do, where does the money come from? This uh, come from America. From America? Yes. The nearest Pakistani city to Kabul and the Afghan border is Peshawar. After the Soviet occupation, Afghanistan's Mujahideen claimed Peshawar as their capital in exile. This is just one of countless headquarters that have sprung up in Peshawar. You can't escape the atmosphere of Peshawar. If anything describes it, it's, it's the bar scene in, in the movie Star Wars. Everybody is there. The Mujahideen are there. KGB spies are there. CIA's there, every other intelligence service, the good, the bad, and the ugly, everybody is there. Peshawar became a hub for the resistance. But the Mujahideen were not united. Divided along ethnic lines, seven different factions competed for weapons coming from abroad. That where we were just now was just one rebel organization. Here, 40 yards down the road, is another. I arrived a few days after the Soviet invasion, and if you wanted to cover the Afghan story, you had to go to Peshawar. Most of the journalists, including myself, were very naive in the beginning. You'd go talk to these political leaders who immediately began telling you these very tall tales about what they'd achieve. You know, they had attacked a convoy of Soviets that killed so and so many hundred, and it was all lies. In Peshawar, incidents do tend to become exaggerated. If all the claims of the Islamic guerrillas were totted up, then almost the entire Soviet force of over 100,000 men would have been destroyed. If you destroy a hundred tanks, if it's not in the media, nothing has happened. Then I rushed to Pakistan back, and I tried to find out the media, exaggerating also sometime to attract them, you know. We, we destroyed 25 tanks, which we had destroyed one. <laughs> really. We, we killed 100 Russians, maybe two. How many Soviet soldiers were killed in Pakistan? Over 800 persons. And how many weapons have they captured? 10,000 in number. 10,000 weapons? Yeah, right. These political leaders realized the more they were cited on VOA or the BBC, the more support they would get from the Americans, from the CIA, and so on. So it was very, very important for them to have this PR. 
Each of those party leaders had their own strange combination of good and evil. But the point was to defeat the Soviet Union. Я попал в Афганистан, в общем, по собственной глупости. Я занимался международной журналистикой. Возникла необходимость поменять корреспондента в Кабуле. Я сказал, я хочу. И им сказали, ты хочешь? Вперед. Это была такая моральная потребность быть причастным к чему-то значительному. Была возможность помочь этому народу. Вот мотив был такой. Он был чем-то, может быть, схож с гражданской войной в Испании в 1939 году. The Soviets helped the Afghan government not only with troops and weapons, but with huge investments to support development of the country. Kabul began to look like a socialist capital. Women gained near equal rights to men. Some even joined the fight against the Mujahideen. The government had their own style of women. I mean, they encouraged more women to come and sing on the, on the stages. They were talking about more women's freedom. But unfortunately, from the Mujahideen side, uh, there was nothing for women except beating them up uh, and should have hijab and should not work, should not do anything. When the government was saying education for women, they said no education. Uh, freedom for women, no freedom for women. So it was, women actually was used as a political tool by both sides. The Soviet army planned to restore order in Afghanistan without major fighting. But as it faced a growing resistance in the mountains, a short mission turned into an endless war. Today, 